That is the typical sound of a Ratley Ducati dry clutch. Some time ago, I did a video on living with a 900 SS. This is before all the, the engine disaster. And Twan van der Bigler from Bigler Performance in Holland um, watched that video and he sent me a private message and he said, hey, Andy, I've got, we, we did a modification for those clutches back in the 90s. Um, that will help you if you're not happy with the rattle. He said, I'm happy to send you one. And um, he very graciously did. So he's, grab he's grabbed one off the shelf. This is the, the pack here. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, he also sent me this really cool T-shirt, which is his race bike. Um, he calls the Punisher. On inspection, this clutch is cactus. And... Um, that's the familiar noise that we're all used to. Uh, they ring like a bloody tuning fork, these, these baskets. Uh, and you're supposed to have about 0.6 of a millimetre of wear um, or free play between the, the basket and the plates. And this one's got tons more than that. They're also quite, um, when I had this clutch apart, when I had the motor apart, they're also quite... Um, a lot of it's worn grooves into the basket. Um, I took the edge off them with a file just so they're not as catchy. But essentially, this clutch needs to be replaced. But in the interim, I'm just going to um, have a look at this clutch modification that Twan sent out and see uh, whether or not it's something that we can use. I'm hoping that that light from that that open door isn't being a pain in the ass with that camera. Uh, it is what it is. Sorry, fellas. So here it is. Uh, we get a, a heavy disc, a small spring-loaded... Uh, it's actually a modified steel plate. It's been bent, 2 mil one, um, and a modified friction pad with no friction pads on it. A uh, friction disc, sorry, with no friction pads on it on one side, and a handful of 1.5 millimeter shims. Ah, shims. Steel plates. So what I'm going to do is remove the old um, clutch assembly and um, I'll pull it out and we'll lay it out on the, on, the, on the workbench here and we'll have a look at what we need to do and what changes we need to make. Yeah, so I need to um, I need to replace this clutch, and I, I just I'm just not in a position to afford it yet. But I want to put Twan's modification in regardless, and just see if it uh, helps with the noise. I mean, all of that all of that gap there is not helping with the noise. We haven't got brilliant light in here today, and uh, the roller door's open, but it was pouring with rain earlier, and that's stopped. It was very wintry. It's about, <laughs> about 9 degrees Celsius, I think, and it's just quite cool. Not a very nice day, a lot of cloud cover, so we don't get a lot of natural sunlight in here. But we'll do it as best we can. Okie dokie, let's um, pop these off and just uh, keep them in order. What I did was when I, when I uh, was cleaning this clutch up, uh, these plates were also quite damaged and I 
dressed all the burrs off them with a file and then I reverse them so that the face of the highest impact on the torque side of the clutch I flipped it over so that you know it would sort of help distribute the, the damage I guess so here's all of our clutch pack uh, sitting on the bench so there is a curved one, one of these is pressed slightly all right, so this is the new setup. So what we've got is this, this spacer disc. So this spacer disc is supposed to go in here. And it is tight in the basket. He did tell me that. He said you'll have to tap it in. If it was a, um, an aluminium basket, you'd heat that up so it'd expand it. All right, eh? I've got this bit of, bit of brass here. <laughs> it was, uh, I'm going to use as a buzz bar for a electroplating thing I was going to set up. Tappy tap tap. Okay, that's seated in there now. So what that's effectively done is take up, it's taking up that we're taking up the difference in the in the length um, from the back of the basket, taking up the space between the back of the basket and the actual um, hub for the input shaft. Okay, what I'm doing there, this plate has the slightest um, had a spring type pressed into it and I need to put it in the right direction and it's bent this way and it needs to go that way in against the plate. Now this particular one, you can see, will float around in there um, and can fall down and hit the basket. Tuan went, oh damn, I sent you an old one. I think what he did was he's just grabbed them off, um, that was smart. I think what he did was he just grabbed them off, he just grabbed one off the shelf and, and put it in a post pack and sent it to me. Uh, but this was like a Gen 1 version and they made some changes. He said it can fall down and make a funny noise. It's not a big problem, but um, it's just something that we need to uh, assess, I guess. And then we put the plate in with the frictionless part towards the that, that ring that we just installed. And then we just start adding plates. Uh, now I think I, from memory, I, I remove these guys. So I'm removing the one that is bent uh, on the original factory setup. Steel plate. Friction plate, rinse and repeat. Now what we're looking for here is to land um, three and a half millimeters from the end. I'm pretty sure Twan said 3.5 millimetres. Um, he told me on uh, on the phone, not, I didn't have it written down. We've got about three millimetres, three millimetres um, there. I'm just doing a bit of sort of working it out myself in my head. The distance, but just um, it's only three point five millimeters from this face to this face. Uh, so in my mind, 
you don't want this bottoming out onto the clutch in a in a hub so i'm going to leave it where it is the idea behind sending me the 1.5 millimeter plates steel plates was that if we were too too close to this uh, the end of this hub um, that we couldn't get enough bite on this i presume that um, you could replace the two millimeter plates with the 1.5 millimeter plates to give you the distance that you need but i'm going to put this back together and we'll have a look at it on the these 900 dry clutches there's a um, a mark in in that one hub um, in that one post there's a like a slot and that's got to line up with that triangle yeah there's no way in the world that's back too far so let's put some springs on there and we'll have a look it might just be that my friction plates are worn enough that I don't I don't need to use any of the 1.5 millimeter plates So when I do finally get new clutch plates, it might be the case that I do need to use them. Can anyone in the comments let me know if there's a torque setting for these and if so, what that is? I can't find it. Right. Well, clutch is definitely grabbed. And it definitely releases. Let's uh, let's see how noisy it is. Oh, I like that. So before it was very clattery and rattly. Um, and if you were in too high a gear um, and the motor was chugging a bit it would really you know, be noisy so I'm hoping that um, that's going to be a good fix I cannot hear that. Pull the clutch in. We can live with that. Let it go again. I like it, I like it a lot. Awesome Twan, you can buy these from Bigelar Performance. I think they're 100 euro, I think, for the, for the kit. So, um, well worth it, I think, if, um, if, if you're not a fan of the constant rattle. Um, I don't mind a bit of rattle when I pull the clutch in and then release it, that's fine. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, when it's while you're actually riding you can hear it and when um, it's idling you can hear it that annoys me a bit all right let's uh, pop the cover back on i like it i like it a lot <laughs> uh i actually like that a real i really like that a lot i like that a real lot just something quick too before i Finish packing this up and I and uh, say goodbye. Brad the bike boy has um, started doing more workshop stuff now. He's um, sort of trying to put a bit more stuff up on YouTube. So head over to Brad the bike boy's channel. Um, link in the corner, also in the description, and give him some love. Uh, 
because, well, you know, the guy knows what he's doing and um, I learned so much during the engine rebuild and have made great connections and he's one of them. So um, definitely if you like your Ducati stuff, head over and, and give him a like, subscribe for, for, for Brad the Bike Boy and, and stay tuned for more com content from him. Spit it out, Andy. That's it for now. Simple clutch mod. Big R performs in Holland. Sell this for 100 euros. Shut your clutch up. Um, I think it's fantastic. Thank you very much, Twine. Uh, yep, Brad the Bike Boy's doing more YouTube stuff. Go check him out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.